That is one of General Idi Amin Dada's quotes. He came to power through a coup. Amin ruled the country with an iron fist between 1971 to 1979 before he was overthrown by the Tanzanian army and various armed Ugandan groups based in Tanzania. He made the usual statements about his government's intent to play a mere caretaker role until the country could recover sufficiently for civilian rule. It is now my intention to work in close cooperation with everybody, with the members of the armed forces, the public and the expatriate from England, from other parts of the world, to plan for proper development of the country. He renamed Government House the Command Post, instituted an advisory defense council composed of military commanders, and placed military tribunals above the system of civil law. He also appointed soldiers to top government posts and parasitical agencies. Uganda was in effect governed from a collection of military barracks scattered across the country, where battalion commanders acting like local warlords represented the coercive arm of the government. One of the people who served in the army during Idi Amin's rule is Major General Waswa Kasidi Gwanga. He clearly recalls how he joined the army. I had to join the army because it was Uganda army and it, I, I was looking for a job. It was not Amin's army. Joining the army at that time wasn't about how educated one was, but rather was based on your appearance and whether or not you could handle a military life. Well, you had to do some push-ups. Mm -hmm. Good ones. Hey. At our age, there were 50. You had to go 50. <coughs> then you walk in. You got 50. Uh-uh. Get out. Hilary Maloba, who served as a captain in the army, believes that this is the reason why the armed forces were full of illiterate officers. The education was, was very low at that time. Yeah, those who were educated were Africans were very few. Training was one of the core foundations of the army during Amin's era, and therefore a lot of time was dedicated to it. We had to do the basic, the basic training, change you from civilian life to a soldier's life. The moment you say you have joined the army, you are going to do whatever it takes to become an army man. They don't care. They can kill you. Maloba says training grounds were established for the various army disciplines and all officers were under the tutelage of British and Israeli military officials. Basic was in Moroto, and then also cadet was Jinja, and then the paracommando was in Lubiri, where the Israelis were training us. Discipline within the army was another tenant that was never overlooked and overly emphasized. Discipline? Yes, sir. That was, I mean, you don't mess up. You go outside. And you beat up people. What's going to happen to you? However, both Gwanga and Maloba agree that Amin's army was rife with tribalism, a factor which influenced the promotions of the soldiers. Especially the Muslims and the Northerners were now taking themselves as if big, you know. For us, we are taking us small. You know, they, 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 even the juniors will not even salute you. But it's embedded here in Africa. People feel insecure. They want close people to be in, you know, but it doesn't work. To me, it doesn't. Whereas education wasn't a prerequisite of joining the army, Major General Kasiti Gwanga says that in the end, it also influenced the rankings within the force. If you, you were to be comfortable in that army of that time, you had to have all level then you'll be someone. That's that. Mm -hmm. The rest, mm -hmm. nothing much. Kasidia Gwanga believes that Idi Amin was a great military man, but even great men make mistakes. To Gwanga, Amin's biggest mistake was to kill young soldiers, whom he suspected of being in cahoots with his political enemies to overthrow him. Because they, are, they were from certain tribes, but we were soldiers. Why did they have to die? In 1978, Uganda went to war against Tanzania. At that time, Tanzania's president, Julius Nyerere, made claims that Idi Amin wanted to annex some of its territories. However, according to Maloba, a fight between a Ugandan and a Tanzanian soldier over a woman near Tanzania's border in Mutukula is what actually led to this war. This was only the cause, because they were in Malaya. And they exchanged bullets. And then that was the war. The war came up. 
So this land we went and destroyed the Kagera, ours. And then we claimed that land and that part now to be part of Uganda. Part of Uganda. And what, what's next? That's how, how the war emerged. Because Idi Amin had filled the army's top pranks with his relatives and supporters, Major General Kasidi Gwanga believes this cost him the Tanzanian war. He says that these officers were not experienced, so when the war broke out, their only worry was losing their wealth. The officer, officer call. We tried to, to have his own, and they were not educated. That's what cost us the war. To make matters worse, Amin had also swelled the army ranks with South Sudanese and Congolese nationals who had no loyalty to the Ugandan army. When Tanzanian forces attacked, they abandoned their Ugandan counterparts. What are we fighting for? What should we die for? So they took off to their original homes, from, from, from the countries, so original countries. And if the true Ugandans remain, but in spite of all this, Gwanga refutes some of the claims that have been made against the Yami during Idi Amin's time. It's like when they say Nasuru made people eat sandals. Can you eat a sandal? Just to excite people, oh, we knew Idi Amin, oh, he did this, oh, he did that. Looking at the UPDF now, Maloba says it is vastly different from the one he served in during Amin's time. The UPDF. Is a discipline. Because those who are, who, 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 who are, who are leaders, who are the commanders, are well educated. Joyce Nakato, NTV, Weekend Edition.